Hi guys, so I've been using the metallic speed paints for, well, quite some time now, and I've always said that they cover really, really well, but they don't really perform like, well, the other speed paints, and in general, I normally have to go over them afterwards with a bit of a wash, just to add some sort of like contrast to the look of them. Um, but I think all this time, it's been me doing it wrong, not the paints, as you'll have seen in a recent video, while well, I mixed in some extra speed paint medium, obviously these, these all contain this anyway, but I put some more in, um, and yeah, I got some awesome results. So I've tried it out again today on a new little miniature. Um, and again, I'm just loving how these metallic paints are working and looking. Obviously, you're doing the old patina look as well on top. Definitely gives it that extra little oomph. And definitely makes it look more, well, more like copper. So just to check that it wasn't a lucky fluke in my last video. Uh, yeah, that's why I've done it again on this, well, this gross looking miniature. And this is actually a golem from, a, well, from an upcoming game that I believe is actually coming out today. I'll leave a link down below. It's a game called The Formatage. Um, apologies if I, if I am saying that incorrectly. I am so bad at saying certain things. Um, it's a game coming out on Steam. So here's a few little details about the game. The Thaumaturge takes place in the early 20th century Warsaw, where different cultures and religions intertwine with each other. Apart from humans, the world is also inhabited by salutars, esoteric beings that only thaumaturges can truly perceive and use for their needs. And the golem I've painted is one of those salutars. Um, so I haven't played the game just yet, I've got a key code for it, so I'll definitely be playing it later on this afternoon, well, when the game does come out fully. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the gameplay looks awesome. Love the graphics, a uh, nice bit of shadowing and all the rest of it there. Um, and yeah, obviously some weird and wonderful creatures to, uh, well, to overcome, as well as obviously a storyline to follow, which is just awesome. Will Victor succeed with our help? So this video is sponsored by 11-Bit Studios, but as always, guys, yeah, anything I say, my own words, I don't have a script, which is generally why I do waffle on and repeat myself quite a lot. So yeah, I was fortunate enough that they sent me this lovely golem, so one of the saluters, um, one of the many sort of mobs and foes you'll, uh, you'll come across in the game. And yeah, usual sort of thing, starting off, a uh, good old slap chop. So black primer, some white dry brushing, a little bit of uh, bit of magic there, and bosh, he's done. So this was 3D printed on the, uh, the Uniformation GK2. Obviously an awesome printer that works really well. Um, yeah, come rain or shine, because obviously it's got a lovely heater on the inside. So painting wise, yeah, I'm going to try out the Green Stuff World Dipping Inks. Um, I've kind of had these sitting on my desk, I don't know, uh, six months, nine months, haven't got a clue. I need to go through and try out the first video of me using these. Um, and yeah, they, they do work really well. Um, for some reason, obviously, I do love the Army Painter ones and I kind of use them probably a lot more because they do have a huge range of colours. Uh, but when looking through um, to see what colours to paint this dude, um, and looking online on the game sort of play, um, yeah, I found that the dipping ink ones I had, well, they seem to be more, well, more liking or looking like the sort of colours used in the character. So yeah, I thought I'd try these out. But so, oh, I'm going to do some videos soon, guys, because I do have quite a lot of paints. Um, so yeah, I need to do some sort of comparisons, just to sort of do side by side, just to see how well the dipping ink sort of stand up to the army painter ones. Because one thing I will say about the dipping ink ones, they are a whole lot cheaper. Um, yeah, again, I'll definitely need to do like a little price comparison as well. Because these are, yeah, significantly different in price. As in, much, much cheaper. Um, and I'm definitely more your value for money kind of guy. Um, I've never been into sort of buying named products just for the fact it's a named product. Um, yeah, some would say I'm tight. I like you to use the word frugal. Um, and certainly like, yeah, certainly like value for money. Um, and I say, yeah, I do need to do a good comparison of the, the Dippin' Ink paints and the Army Painter speed paints. So yeah, but I'll probably do a video of that coming up soon, guys. Because obviously I've got lots of Hero Quest miniatures to paint. So um, yeah, we'll do a comparison there. Anyway, enough of that sidetrack waffle. Let's get back to painting this golem. Um, not too many colours on this chap. Um, I've only seen a few reference pictures of him. Uh, I'm going to say he does seem to be sort of, well, he has a lot of parts that sort of, I don't know, are built into him or part of him or I'm not all too sure. So I haven't seen the full sort of gameplay yet. 
Um, I've only seen this creature in a little bit of action. Um, definitely a large chunky monkey. Um, but as you can see, yeah, he's got some like copper, well, copper parts sticking out of him. So maybe he is part copper as well. I'm not 100% sure of that. Um, but yeah, we'll come to the copper part in just a minute. So the Tiffany Ink World paints. Um, one thing I will initially say with these, these are definitely more, again, this is where my technical terms are lacking, uh, more translucent, more opaque, thinner. Um, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. Basically, you put these on, um, and yeah, so the paint is a lot <laughs> wetter. <laughs> Again, I don't know what words to say, guys. I mean, let's say, if you want to watch pro painters, they know all the technical terms, and they can flash you with all their knowledge of, yeah, words and bits and bobs. Yeah, there's loads out there. Uh, when it comes to me, I am, say, I'm unlike you. I'm just a guy sitting at a desk in my living room. Um, painting stuff because I love painting it's a great therapeutic thing to do um, and yeah it's just a fun hobby so yeah this guy didn't take too long to sort of get through with all the paints and um, the paints yeah they dry pretty quick as well so there's no real difference in the drying time of these to the army painter ones I say I will definitely do a good old comparison I'll get two miniatures is that the same um, and have a go at painting them with both of these, uh, well, these lovely paints. But as you can see, though, yeah, these definitely do the great bit of pooling in the uh, the nooks and crannies and all the rest of it. Uh, so you get some nice darker areas. Um, and then, yeah, on the top, uh, very, very light, which is uh, just great. So, yeah, initial impressions, these are good. Um, so I did do a video when I first got these paints many, many moons ago. Um, and then for some reason, they've just been sitting on my desk, kind of almost gathering dust. Um, but say, as Green Stuff World sent me their lovely uh, silicone mat, you can see underneath there. Absolutely love using that. So yeah, here's the big game changer with the metallic paints. Um, why I've never done this before, I have no idea. Um, say, I've always sort of said that the metallic paints by Army Painter, their speed paint range, go on really, really well. But if anything, they cover too well. Um, so you don't get to see any sort of like darker areas. It is more of a consistent color but as you can see here mixing in some more of that um, that speed paint medium uh, yeah it really does make it more translucent again wetter I know that's not a proper term guys but that's all I can keep think of um, but yeah as you put it on um, you can still see all that lovely sort of the white dry brushing and the dark primer underneath uh, and it just looks great uh, and obviously this stuff dirty down oh, I love this stuff um, normally I use obviously a lot of their rust their rust effects because it just works it's just magic in a bottle but the um, yeah this patina sort of look stuff um, works just as well again it's really weird because it does it all for you so you just put it on here and there um, and then wet your brush just to sort of get variations in the level or degree of how much paint you're putting on so some areas will be sort of like caked in it um, and some areas are a bit more well a bit more watered down I say for the rust, this works perfectly as well because you get a lot more streaky lines because of the more water you put on, the wetter it gets. I can't not keep stop saying wet now. Um, yeah, the wetter the paint gets, it drips, and then you get some lovely rusty bits. Uh, but say for this, the old um yeah, the patina look, it just, again, it takes a little while to dry this stuff. Um, you want to leave it at least half an hour. Although what I have done in the past is uh, you could use a hair dryer on it. I don't have a hair dryer, but I do have a heat gun, so I've used that a few times. So when it's fully dried, obviously it's probably a little bit too green there. So what I'm going to do is go over and do a little bit of dry brushing with some good old bronze. This will hit just the uh, the edges, highlights, bits and pieces, like say on the face, like the nose and the chin, areas that are probably going to get rubbed more. Um, and yeah, it just brings them back to a lovely glossy sort of look. Um, and yeah, it's so simple and so easy. To get this lovely bronzed patinaed look um, and yeah I just love it and I say this figure because um, he has got obviously a lot of these bronzy bits poking out of him uh, yeah it's just perfect so guys don't forget to check out the link below as when you see this video yeah the farmitage over on Steam should be live um, yeah go and check it out and enjoy with the gameplay so I'm definitely going to be playing later on as well I want to come across this lovely character just to see if I have done him justice in my little paint job here um, because yeah I think he looks absolutely awesome uh, and obviously using a bit of the old smoke machine 
yeah, it's always another way of getting lovely pictures of him. Uh, and I think he's come out really, really well. And there we go, the perfect way to get some aged bronzed, well, statue bits and pieces. Um, and yeah, this is definitely my go-to method for doing this. And so I'm going to be trying out this with the, uh, well, with the other metallic paints, the silvers and the golds and all the rest of them. So a big shout out and thank you again to 11-Bit Studios for sponsoring this video, as well as sending me the, uh, the STL file for this lovely chap as well. I think it looks pretty cool and I can probably use him. Well, in some Hero Quest D&D or any kind of other games that need a big end boss. There was another video on the screen, guys. Give that a click, see more what I do. And if you are new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell as I am producing a good two free videos every week because, well, I'm just loving what I'm doing. Don't forget to like, share, leave comments down below, all that good stuff. You guys take care. See you in the next one. Bye for now.